tutorial on post-processing your starlight photographies. You're here with Rich and thanks for stopping in and we hope you enjoy this video. So right now I'm looking at a final product, well almost a final product, from the other night photographing the Milky Way at Hovenweep National Monument. So we've got the Airstream here, we've got the uh, really amazing Milky Way band coming down into the horizon and we've got some things going wrong over here in the photo and that would be um, that would be light coming from the airstream off onto these bushes but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves let's first talk about doing this um, star photography and let me kill acrobat popping up there sorry about that so okay this is not the original image out of the camera so what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go into my all photographs. And so I had multiple shots. And so here's the one I selected that I liked. And once again, did not like the uh, light patch down here. So in the end, I actually edited that in uh, Photoshop and got rid of the light patch. See, it's gone there. But let's take a look very quickly at an image that hasn't been worked on yet. And what are we going to do here? Well, number one, so looking up here upper left, it was a 22 second exposure at f4 at ISO 6400, which is the top ISO for my Canon 5D Mark II. Now, this photo is workable. When we zoom in, I just want you to see when you're shooting at high ISOs, um, you're going to have a lot more noise. We're still waiting for this to come up. And so there you go. You can see all of this noise in here. A lot of pixelation going on. If you print this big, it's not, not going to be the prettiest thing in the world. Fortunately, if you're using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, which is extremely reasonably priced these days, um, you can deal with a lot of that noise very quickly. Up here on the top, I'm going to go to the Develop module. And now we're just waiting for the Develop module. And on my right-hand side, I have my develop settings and I'm going to close the basic for now and I go all the way down to detail and right here I have noise reduction and so I can actually push the luminance noise reduction up. Let's zoom into this once more and we see all that noise so I'm going to go put this luminance noise reduction luminance noise reduction at about 50 and look at the difference. Let's slide that back. See all that pixelation? Pop that up to 50. We've cleaned that up a lot, so it's a lot smoother. It's going to look a little nicer in print. And it's still showing us the Milky Way band, but it's not really popping for us yet. So I'm going to close the detail screen here. We're going to go back up to the basic panel. And I am simply going to take the clarity slider and punch it to 100% now look at that change so if i double click the word clarity that brings me back to zero so here we go kind of flat let's punch that clarity up there's the milky way band as a matter of fact i want to punch the vibrance up just a little bit more to get a little more color in there and we'll slide saturation up just a bit and there we go let's take a look at the before and after i can actually pop that onto screen here so on the left hand side is our before and on the right hand side is our after. Boy did we pull that Milky Way band out. So when you're shooting at high ISO and you're shooting celestial bodies, maybe you've got a big zoom and you want to photograph Jupiter or Mars or the moon or what have you, if you're going to shoot at higher ISO, you're going to have a lot more noise in the image. So if you're utilizing a program like uh, Photoshop Lightroom, you can go right into the noise reduction panel, reduce that noise, and then if you need some more detail and clarity out of it, all you have to do is go into the basic panel, punch that clarity up, and stylize it to, um, to where you're comfortable. Now I'm going to zoom in on both of these once more because I just want to show you once again, look at all the noise in this one, and we've had a good amount of noise reduction here, but since we punched that clarity, we've added some more noise. So one thing we could do if we want to remove some of that noise, we could take the clarity down just a bit and um, it's still popping, but in my case, since we're showing most of this digitally and I'm not worrying about doing this one for print, um, I'm going to go ahead with that 100% clarity. 
So there you go. There's a quick walkthrough for cleaning up your image that you're working on if you're doing the night sky photography at high ISO. In the next segment, we're going to take a look at the low ISO uh, star trail photos and what we might need to do with those in post-processing. All right, now we're going to take a look at uh, star trail photo. Now, this photo is very different from the Milky Way photo we did. The Milky Way photo uh, was shot at an extremely high ISO of 6400 uh, so that we could capture the image quickly. And it was photographed in a very short span of time. Now, this is the original star trail photo from Vulture Peak where we were boondocking uh, back in the spring of 2014. And let's take a look up here in the upper left. So here's the actual raw image file uh, as it came out of the camera. And this was 3,000 seconds long at f8 at ISO 100. So 3,000 seconds, let's go ahead and grab a handy dandy calculator. 3,000 divided by 60 seconds for each minute. So this exposure was 50 minutes long. It could have actually gone longer couple of mistakes we made with the Airstream. Number one, we had too many lights on inside, so even with a uh, narrower aperture and a low ISO, we blew out the windows. So I'm thinking probably if we had set this to, let's say, an aperture of 14 or maybe even 22, uh, we wouldn't have had as much light information in the sky. We'd still get those trails but maybe we would have had a little more detail in the windows. So that was, uh, that was one of the mess up points here. Uh, another thing to point out, so we've got a lot of um, blue streaks from these stars, so it could be that I would want to reset my white balance. Now, with our Milky Way photo, with that high ISO, we had a lot of noise. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and take a look to see you know, how noisy is this one. This isn't too bad. Remember, we're shooting at ISO 100, so you don't expect a lot of noise. This is a long exposure, 50 minutes long, but this isn't too bad. We could go into the develop module, and I've got my side-by-side -side before and after. I'm going to just switch back to my main view, but I could go in here and jump down to the detail and punch that noise reduction up a little bit, take a look back in here, and yes, we've reduced some of the noise. I'm going to do the comparison, but really not too much noise. So in the end, I'm not going to go with that noise reduction because if I do this for print, um, this isn't too noisy and I don't want to over smooth anything. So what else do I need to do with this image? Well, there's a couple cleanup items. We can see a glowing green light down here from our power hookup and that glowing green light is actually reflecting off of our airstream so i might want to remove that green glow later and i can do that in one of several ways one of the ways that i could do that let's close all these panels we're in the develop module in lightroom and i could actually go to hue and saturation and let's just desaturate that green and desaturate that aqua and we'll take a look and that has gotten rid of a lot of that glow. The other thing I can do is zoom right in here and grab myself the clone healing tool and pop that right out. There I go, that's gone. So we've just got a little green glow here and we could go in with a saturation brush and brush that down as well if we wanted to. Now when I'm looking at the Airstream itself, I'm not liking the noise on it, so I'm actually going to go back down here to detail and I'm going to go ahead and reduce some of that noise. It's still happening in there, so I'm not going to be able to get too much of it out. So I'm probably going to print this smaller and not giant. I'm going to go ahead and zoom that out, but already I'm happier with this image, just getting rid of that green glow over there. Next step we can do is grab the crop tool and I want to straighten the airstream out a little bit. I'm going to lose some of the airstream, but I like that a little better now. The other thing I can do in the basic here, this is a very cool image um, as far as color temperature goes. I don't want those star streaks to be so blue. So I can go ahead and warm it up just a bit, 
not too much. I don't want to overdo this. And let's go ahead and look at the before and after. So I'm clicking down here. So warmed up the airstream a little and warmed up the night sky just a bit. Then the final thing I might want to do is maybe I'll even do a black and white treatment on this one. And I've got a bunch of presets for that. But we could try one of the Lightroom black and white filters. Do an infrared style. No, I don't like that at all. So I'm going to hit Command Z. And uh, we'll forget those presets. Let's take a look at the next stuff. High contrast? No. Not at all. Maybe that's an interesting look right there. So now I've got a black and white star trail photo. Now the one other thing that I did wrong in this image when I set up for it was I didn't look ahead to see where north was. As you can see, I've got these stars swirling through here, and had I pointed more toward the left, if I had reframed the shot and moved to my right on the Airstream and shot further to the left, I could have had a full circle of the, uh, of the star trails over the Airstream. But because I didn't point to the north and use the north stars uh, as the point that I was aiming at, I only got part of the star swirl. So there you go. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're going to do post-processing if you're using Lightroom. And um, just a heads up, Adobe's doing a special, and they have been for quite a while, and we don't advertise for them, but $10 a month uh, on the Adobe Cloud subscription gets you Photoshop and Lightroom. So you're talking $120 for a year. Uh, that's an incredible deal. So if you don't have... Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, and you've always wanted it, now might be the time to get it. All right, thanks for following along with the tutorial, and we hope that you enjoyed this video and the post that's associated with it.